Playground. Find us. Welcome to the SBK Show. I'm your host, SBK. That's Soul Brother Kevin. For those who know me and have been rocking with me, I really appreciate it. For those who just stumbled across this and you're wondering, what is this? Why is this um, an option to even download and consume? Well, I'll tell you, I am a 20 year radio veteran. And I found myself deplatformed, um, separated from the mic, from the corporate uh, entity. Some people call that fired. Some people call that budget cuts. Some people call that let go. Some people call that canceled, not canceled like cancel culture, but canceled like in a way where you were there and now you're not there. I don't know what you want to call it. It all ends up being the same. It's like friendly fire. You're just as dead. So from the start, when people are like, what the hell happened? They want answers. Kevin. W-T-F. And I guess I'm here to give those answers. SoberTheKevin.com is the website, the official website for the SBK show. No, this is not the Soul Brother Kevin show. I know they sound similar. I know my voice sounded the same on both. But however, look, SBK is what I want to go by because it's shorter. If I want to buy a chain, it's Cheaper to buy it with three letters, SBK, than the whole damn thing. So, Brother Kevin Show. I, it's just a separation. Maybe it sounds the same to you, but it's totally different to me. And uh, that's what we're rocking with. And when your social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, whatever, you never know when they're going to take a dump. The domain, SoberTheKevin.com. If you lock it into your phone and or tablet or computer situation, I will always put the latest updates on that site um, regardless, because that is something that I have established. And I know you go, oh, it's just a website. Yes, yeah, just a website. But I have control now. I no longer have to second guess myself. I no longer have to. See if my opinion aligns with a corporate entity whose job and, you know, rightfully so, is to protect the client, protect the reputation of the company and make sure that that company is profitable and make sure they have people on the airwaves doing profitable things. Now, I'm going to get into What matters most to people, if you were a fan of the Soul Brother Kevin show, it's been about two weeks. And you want to know what happened. I'll tell you what happened. Well, first, I took a week off just to not have to pay attention to news stories to not have to have my mind occupied from the time I wake up to the time I crack the mic of what am I going to talk about? Let me research this topic. Let me get my take. Let me see what I'm thinking. Let me figure that out. Look, that right there is enough to drive you crazy. Definitely enough to drive you crazy. I have a lot of people that have called my number I've always had two numbers. It's kind of like my personal number. And then I've had another number that I would give people that maybe I don't really know you, but I wanted to like stay in contact with you. It's not like I'm like some, you know, trying to give you a fake number, but I do have a number. And for the purposes of this show and how I connect to people now, of course, I'll be doing some YouTube stuff, some Twitch stuff. The YouTube channel will be popping. All of this is in the description. All of my contacts are in the description of this podcast, and you can look for content on all of those platforms 
Some of it may be the same. Some of it may be different, unique, unannounced, just dropped because I know people like to connect in the way that they like to connect. If you're a YouTube person, you might not be a TikTok person. If you're a TikTok person, you might not be, you know what I'm saying, Facebook, whatever will be. When it comes to YouTube, um, I got to figure out that Al Gore rhythm. I didn't even know Al Gore had rhythm. Apparently, he's running YouTube now and he invented the Internet. But I'm not going to get into that. But I don't know what I'm going to get into. I never thought I was going to do a podcast and I never thought I was going to do a podcast because um, I figured I'm, I'm so old school in radio in the sense of, man, once I got off the air, I gave it up. I gave it all. I, I left it all on the table. I didn't really have anything else to tell you or I didn't think I had anything worthwhile to give you that would be extra. See, I give all the extras. I can't do this halfway when it comes to how I feel, expressing myself. Now, I have to zigging and zagging. I have to maneuver. I have to say things in a clever way or in a way where you can understand what I'm saying without me necessarily getting ensnarled in controversy, which when you're trying to explain that stuff up the line, they don't understand you. What they understand is that they getting heat. And when they get heat, you're going to get some heat. And then nobody's really trying to understand. Not insinuating that something like that happened with me. I'll tell you, that's far from the case. Certain things or guidelines that I have to abide by in my post um, deplatformcation from the station situation, which if you're in the corporate business, you understand how there are certain things you can and cannot say. With that being said, that's a period of time. And then I'll be able to tell you some other stuff, but I'm not going to hold back from telling you what happened because i know people want to know what happened i know people has been worried about me yo what up kev it's the witch troll dog just trying to figure out what's going on with you man i've been thinking about you a lot lately man give me a holler when you get the message give me a holler homie Peace. i could tell you exactly what's been going on with me i took a week off just because I was getting ready to take a week off just on some vacation type stuff. But I took an extra week off for a couple of reasons. I was trying to figure out what the next move was. If there should be a next move. And if I wanted to stay in the content business. If I wanted to find another radio situation <laughs> or if I wanted to embark on trying to build something from the ground up. Now, I know I have some people that have been supporting me forever, ever since I started. And the people that support you, they're rooting for you. They really want you to they want to hear you and they want you to do well. I mean, some of them sound crazy. SBK, Boombay, Bangus. SBK, I'm happy as hell that you're uh, starting the podcast up. And you should send me uh, songs back on AOL Instant Messenger. The Hurricane. Peace. And I appreciate the support, and I appreciate the love. All right, all right, Kevin. Glad you're back on, bro. Good deal. It's not so much of a deal. It's uh, kind of like, uh, you know, people congratulate me on the podcast. On one side, I get it. The other side, I don't. Like, you can make your own podcast. Anybody can make a podcast. It's not like a thing anymore. I remember when it was a thing. Now everybody has one. And that kind of made me gun shy. It, this starting a podcast was the biggest I might have said this already. I don't even know, man. I was afraid to start one. I've never been afraid to speak my mind or say what was on my mind or get under somebody's skin because they didn't agree with my point of view. But, man, I just couldn't get my head around doing a podcast. I didn't think there was anything new about it. I didn't think there was anything different about it. I'm like, what can I do to bring the game? But 
Now that this is the only access you have to me, if you're accustomed to listen, I'm like, well, let's do a podcast. Let's see what happens. Will people listen? What up, SBK? You got a podcast? We gonna listen to that. Boom bye. It's boom bye. As in Ali Boom bye. I stole that from Muhammad Ali. The GOAT. The only GOAT. When I hear people say, Oh, I'm the GOAT of this, or I'm the GOAT of that, or that guy's a GOAT. Tom Brady's a GOAT. No. Tom Brady's may be the best quarterback to ever play in the NFL. Kind of hurts to say that. But it's true. But he's not the GOAT. There's only one GOAT in one sport, and that's boxing, the sport of kings. And his name was Muhammad Ali. And he was the greatest of all time. Y'all say GOAT. And you start thinking about an actual goat. Make me think a curry goat or something. But nah, bro. Braz. There's only one goat. His name is Muhammad Ali. Don't get it twisted. Don't try to make it into something. Y'all got to find another way to say that people are good. Yo, you like the goat of it? Nah, you got to be like the goat. Ain't nobody like no goat. There's only one. And I stand by that. And Boom Baye, they were telling Ali to murder his enemies, which I don't see any other thing that you should do to an enemy. You don't love their enemy. You love your neighbor. But SBK, Boom Baye, that means I'm trying to kill them all. Murder the competition. Well, it looks like this time I left on my shield. But I never took a dive. I was never a crook. I never took money that wasn't earned, wasn't due to me. And, man, I spared a lot of people's feelings. Man, I held a lot back. For somebody who really prides himself on being open and honest and sharing my life, my thoughts, and my real things with people, you know, what you got on the air, if you met me in person, I'm kind of a little more than that. Like um, what I mean by that is that, yeah, I'm what you heard on the air. I didn't really fake it, but I gave you the corporate version of me. Like what was this? I'm, you know, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit more spicy in person. You know, you never looked in my eyes and saw the conviction or like saw that I meant what I was saying. And I didn't really back down by it. I never really was mean spirited. I never tried to go after people per se. I did have one line, one rule, and that was I was going to be a radio personality on my own terms. And I wasn't going to have anybody handle me or treat me any differently than anybody else. I wasn't going to be beholden to a different standard or a different set of rules i was gonna play the game like everybody else was playing the game and i wanted the rules to be the same for me so i really didn't take too kindly when people tried to manhandle me or over talk me or talk to me like i was stupid on my own show or say something that i thought was unsavory you ain't gonna say that on my show you can say that before i get on if the host gonna allow that you can say that after i get off if the host gonna allow that With that being said, man, I've been doing this for 20 years and be honest with y'all, I was kind of over it. I never really knew if I wanted to continue doing radio the way radio had to be done in 2021. And I kind of felt like I missed the train on other radio and Internet and social media personalities who kind of tried to get into radio. Make no mistake about it. Radio was the goal for a lot of these people and they came in and they did internships and maybe they got a little overnight shift or maybe they won a contest or something to get into radio. And it was, you know, they did it and it worked out for them. Some it didn't work out for. And then they moved on to other things and had to embrace other ways of getting a platform, getting their voice out, being consistent, building a fan base and having some mm, some gravitas, so to speak, some sort of weight when they said something. But man, they say video killed a radio star. 
Then the internet killed the video star. And then social media killed everybody. And it seemed like the noise you made on the radio just wasn't loud anymore. Didn't stand out. That happened in music radio a long time ago. When the last time you listened to a music radio station to hear what you wanted to hear as far as music goes? You had to trust the DJ. You had to trust them that they had some insight, that they knew your favorite artist, that they could give you something that you weren't going to get. But now you can get it all on the Internet. So either the people that are still listening to radio are still tied into it because they were always tied into it. Or maybe it had a staying power because it's still the cheapest form of entertainment to deliver. It's everywhere. It's in every car. Now, some people say, when's the last time I listened to the radio? I, I listen to what? I listen to podcasts. Podcast is not radio. Radio is not podcasts. No, not the same. I've done both. Now I'm doing, I mean, I used to do SBK Live. People still asking about that. Yo, what's up, SBK? Rattlesnake a snake in the mailbox. I got some questions. How's Tampa? How you doing, man? You miss Orlando? Do you miss us in Orlando? I got to tell you, I don't know how Tampa is. I left Tampa in January. Packed up everything, put it in storage, and got in the car, moved back to Tallahassee on January 4th of 2021. And I have not been back to Tampa since that because of the whole, you know, situation. So I don't know how Tampa is. I hear from people. I talk to people. I see the news outlets. Well, not lately. I've been checking out any news lately. I, I don't really care. I, I knew the day that I walked out of the studio that it would be the last time I was ever in the studio. And I knew that because I'm a three percenter. And that's not what you think. We can talk about that later. But do I miss Tampa? How's Tampa? I don't know, man. Never lived in Tampa. I lived in Lutz when I moved here. And then I lived in St. Pete. I miss St. Pete. St. Pete, the place I had in St. Pete, right down the street from Vinoy Park, was the best place that I've ever lived, period. I love my neighbors. I love the location, location, location. I love being close to downtown St. Pete, like right there, walking distance, everything. I miss that terribly. But Orlando has a different place in my heart. Orlando's special. Orlando is where I have a plethora of friends. Like, all types of friends 15 years worth of friends never can really say that I found that same sort of intimate relationship with the city not in Tampa I didn't feel that I, I felt like I was amongst them but not one of them you would think I would feel have really nostalgic feelings towards Tampa like you would really think that I would really have been Love in Tampa like it was a home feeling because you know, I was born in Tampa General Hospital in 1972. Then I was reborn in 2017 when I received kidney transplant from my kidney donor, Brian, who I considered a friend. But Tampa wasn't really a good story for me. And. Being on the radio and being in the public eye and being the kind of person that I am knowing I couldn't sit on my medical situation. Didn't play out for me the way I thought it would play out. I took a lot of L's in Tampa. And I kept some of them L's with me for a while and it took a long time for me to dig my way out of the whole that happened to me in Tampa. I had to keep going. And a long time ago, I had to learn to block out what other people's expectations should be on how I should act, be, and think 
about someone giving me a kidney to save my life and how I'm supposed to be some magical evolved just this person that's totally different and just angelic like and I'm supposed to just be so thankful and meek and humble but I was a dude that talked my shit that looked you in the face and said okay that's what you believe well here's what I believe and I wasn't going to back down. I'm never going to back down. And if I'm wrong, I can admit I'm wrong. But when I'm right, I'm not going to back down regardless. And I know that that rubbed people the wrong way. So I guess because someone gave me a kidney, if I'm in a disagreement, yo, this was battle for me. A lot of people, they laugh and joke on the radio and it's a ha ha ha. And we live in a fake world and there's fake exchanges, fake friendships. You'd be surprised when you're not with the company anymore. Who reaches out to you and who doesn't? It speaks volumes. Now, I'm not here to call people out. I'm not here to say I thought better of certain people. I'm not here looking for or asking for any kind of sympathy. I'm here to talk my shit on my platform that can never be canceled. Anyway, guy was asking me about Orlando. Yo, so a long time listener. First time caller, I've been listening to SBK podcast. I've been listening to SBK Live since y'all were on uh, Real Radio Saturday nights. So, question What is Ride the Lightning? Like, what does that mean? What does it mean to Ride the Lightning? Shout out to my man, Big Mike from Swamp Patrol. He was the first one that would read my Twitter messages at the Soul Brother on Twitter. And it would be those. I mean, maybe they weren't natural. Maybe they were enhanced by some libations and some other smoking situations. That was all, well, it's all questionable. It's all in the past now. It's all, you know, who would have known? There's so much stuff that's happened. It, it, um, I used to just get on Twitter and go off about any and everything that was happening in the world around me, what I was thinking, what I wanted to be doing, what I needed to be doing. I would just get on there and he would say, man, Big Mike would say, man, you riding that lightning. And, you know, riding the lightning is a reference to being electrocuted in the electric chair. And that was just my way of SBK getting in his bag and going off. That's what I used to do. And I used to do it quite often. And if I did it like that now, I probably would get canceled, as they say. But I've matured in my social media dealings and how I go about expressing myself and engaging with people. Man, used to be back in the day. You could just get on Twitter and do what you wanted to do. I was one of the first people I got on Twitter the weekend it was released. I heard about it, got on it. And... um Man, it was great. And then it went through some changes. And now, Twitter, you can lose your damn job, lose your life, lose your wife, lose your girlfriend, your boyfriend, and your non your significant, your side piece. You, you lose your whole booty meat on there now. And I had to back up off of that because I thought I would go out with Twitter. I thought Twitter would get me. But I used to ride that lightning hard. And by that meaning, I was carrying that lightning. I was riding that lightning and I was throwing boats on that ass and stanging people in the booty. And that's what I was doing. And I really was not giving any fucks when I was doing it. I wasn't. I was letting it go. I was letting it go hard. I was throwing that D. Well, I mean, the lightning, throwing that L. Throwing L's, people was catching them when you was messing with me. Go on. Last question, and then I'll hang up and listen. Can't wait to hear the podcast, man. Is uh, do you stay in touch with Angel and Matt? Are they any plans on them joining the podcast or being like guests on the show? Anyway, uh, love the show, man. Hope take care. Hope you're doing all right. Peace. Bye, guys. In you. And that's a weird question when people ask me about Matt and Angel. Are they going to be guests on the podcast? That would be wild for me to have Angel and Matt as a guest on the SBK show. That would be totally wild. But I know people want to hear SBK Live. They keep asking me about it. Yo, yo, yo. This is Willie Mays, a.k.a. at Queens Hip Hop. SBK Live. Where is it at? We need that back. We need to correct the travesty of taking it off the air years ago. Y'all should have been nationally syndicated. 
Yeah, just as good as Breakfast Club, if not better. I don't know what they were thinking over there, but they need to correct that. You guys, you guys, man, you guys are amazing, man. I'm, I, I can't wait to hear y'all again. Peace. So, make no mistake about it. SBK Live was always Kevin, Matt, and Angel. There had been talks of reviving SBK Live, the three of us, to kind of do what you already knew we were doing. There's some works on the SBK Live Legacy Channel on YouTube, which includes all of the back catalog. There was a Patreon thing we talked about. Look, look, let me just tell you what it is. Okay, look, look, okay. So Matt is now rich. And he's been blacked with um, he has a betrothed is very beautiful, a uh, black woman, Brazilian woman, very happy man. He is. He's fat now. He's rich. He's daddy Warbucks. He is. I don't know who he is, but he's rich. He got out of radio. He's a smart one and got the hell away from all of that kind of stuff. Now, he is still currently running a very corrupt fantasy football league. Nothing has changed on that note. But I never really approached him because I didn't know what his interest level is. I, I never really knew what his interest level was with doing SBK Live again. I just never really know what people are thinking. I don't expect people to be like all about it like I was all about it. Or like, you know, or I don't expect the person that gets out of radio to still be about it. You know, once they get out, start doing different things and realize that there's more to life than radio. Only radio guys get caught up in thinking that radio is the end all be all. With that being said, me and Angel discussed doing SBK Live, just me and him. And uh, just keeping it going if Matt wasn't interested. And then there was talks where I did reach out to Matt recently and I asked him of his interest level and was like, yo, do some episodes with us and do episodes when you're available. And if you're not available, then we'll just do the episodes without you. Didn't really want to do it that way, but I didn't know if he would still be able to give us the Matt that he was giving us because he's so detached from it. Might be rusty, man. Might not know how to do that SBK Live thing no more. But you know what? I think you might see him back on the show. I think that he would be interested in him. We are going to see. I will pursue that. All of that will be under my new imprint, SBK Media, which now is a thing. And underneath that umbrella, I provide, well... The plan is to provide you content, to provide a solo podcast, which is now the SBK show. It was going to be called SBK on fire, but now it's called the SBK show because I already had the logos and I like the logos. <laughs> I'm going to rock with the logos. So it's the SBK show. Underneath that as well will be other things like SBK live. And then, you know, there will be a Patreon. I, you know, I really don't know where the show is going to go. And what you're hearing now is not necessarily the new show. It's just me giving you a recap of what has happened in the last two weeks because you can now hear me here. SoberTheKevin.com, the SBK show. What that show is going to be. It's going to turn into all types of little juicy nuggets. I'm just going to speak this out and then I will end this episode by playing all of the calls. I had people call me at 407-276-0619. Everything I'm saying now as far as links and access and where you need to go will be in the descriptions and you'll figure it out because the show that I'm going to do is going to be driven by your phone calls asking me questions, engaging, bringing up topics, getting my opinion on things that are topical, that are relevant. It also be very personal. It's the SBK show. So you're going to get a lot of SBK in an in-depth, intimate way in which you're riding with me. If you're on the journey, you're going to get all of it. Not me just kind of posturing and scrambling for content and just wilding out on stuff and being fake outraged and just doing all type of gaslighting i don't really know what gaslighting is i get told that i do it but i don't really know what it is it's, you know it's just this internet stuff if i start sounding like the internet and i that's going to be a topic too 
I I feel like a lot of people I talk to, they sound like the Internet. They sound like they are about everything that everybody has poured into the Internet and they're just taking their piece. Same pictures, same clothes, same vacation, same hoes, same expression, same food, same everything. It's like a couple of people are willing to stand out and be themselves and just forge through with their own ideas and opinion, not really caring about likes or the algorithm or deplatforming or demonetization and all of that type of thing. I'm just not interested in the group think. Um, I've always been an individual. March to the beat of my own drum. I got a different drum with a different sticks with a different rhythm. You might be on boom, bap, boom, boom, bap, and I might like boom, 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 bap, boom, 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 bap. See, I'm off beat, off rhythm, but that's my natural rhythm. Not gonna wear the crazy hat just to be like I'm crazy hat man. Look at me, I have a crazy hat. No, if I want to wear a hat, I wear a hat, and it's not like look at me. It's my hat, bitch. It's my head. It's what I do. I'm wearing it. This is what I want to wear. Not trying to stand out. Man, I just. So hard to be yourself, man. But having this podcast and after being afraid to do one for so long, don't know why, it will finally give me the chance to slow the pace down, calm down, and figure out how I can be my genuine, most authentic self without anybody getting in my head, without anybody trying to suggest or coach to me how I should be when they never understood me from day one 20 years being in this business and I can't really say I've had somebody that understood me where I was coming from what my point of view was why did I think the way I thought why was my humor different than other people's humor why were my observations a little bit different why would you disagree with me on so much but I could still make you laugh or I could entertain you why did I say the thing that you didn't think I was going to say of all the options you couldn't even conceive of it why did my co-workers not get me why did they not understand why couldn't they see where I was coming from when I was screaming I've always, always been very direct and honest, never tried to deceive people. But, you know, life hands you certain set of situations. And I had a lot of situations that probably would have taken a lot of people out. I have a lot of things that I thought were going to take me out, but they empowered me. And some of the things that you thought I should be happy about. Yeah, I hate when people tell some people. I hate when people try to tell people how they should, how they think you should think, how they think you should feel like I really care when you're not toting what I'm toting, when you're not holding what I'm holding. We get in situations that you would have cracked and folded a long time ago and you wonder why I'm looking at it differently than you because I'm me. And I haven't had a whole lot of support where people thought it was okay for me to be me. Man, we might both be laughing. You have no idea what I'm laughing about or why I'm laughing or why we laughing at the same thing. But it means two different things altogether. Okay. I wish I had my glasses. I don't have my glasses. So I'm blind and I can't see. So I'm going to get my glasses. And then we're going to finish this show. This is Jay Yandel. I dropped my phone in the toilet. Lost your contact. Do call me back. At 239. Jesus, my phone number is going to be. Check your call ID. Negative. If you know me, then you probably know that it's only rare times where I'm in the mood to really talk on the phone. Just not my thing. Kind of like to be in my own head with my own thoughts, thinking about things. And I talked about being a three percenter earlier. It's not a five percent or minus two. It's not a three percenter like um, what's that with the bikers? Not like a one percenter or three percenter. Anyway, there's three percent of the population that currently cannot afford 
to get the virus. Meaning that if they did get the virus, their outcomes would not be good. Not in a kind of sort of way, in a actual factual way. And the one thing that I could do, which I've always been able to do, is be alone. I'm comfortable being alone. I'm an only child. I'm comfortable getting in a car, driving by myself. I can go on vacation by myself. I can go to dinner by myself. I can get drunk drive by myself. I can do whatever I need to do by myself and be comfortable. I don't necessarily need someone there to validate and or run my experience by to have had an experience. I might not even take pictures. It's for me to enjoy. And that's what the podcast is going to be. It's not going to be conventional. Whatever conventional is, I listen to a bunch of podcasts and I never hear something and say, I want to do it like that. Now, I do sit around and overthink and that's not good. And in the pandemic, me being alone and preferring to be alone was fun. It was entertaining. It was also detrimental to my mental health. And just because I liked it. I mean. Junk it like drugs, you know, wine or like wine. That doesn't mean that because you have an unlimited amount of it, that that's a good thing for you. Just mean you ain't going to run out. Might get tired of it. Might get bored. I have bored. a dedicated question uh, referring back to a previous episode. Well, I just scared myself with that. According to Kevin. Okay, Dwayne- st- stop. That scared the hell out of me. Um, It was not good for me to spend a year in my studio apartment in beautiful downtown St. Pete. Did I tell you how much I loved living in that place? Um, It was not good for me to do that. And I couldn't jump bubbles back and forth. My doctor told me to get in one bubble and stay in it. And if I was going to go get in another bubble to go there and stay in it. So I decided because of health issues and family situation and me being the only son, it was time for me to come back to Tallahassee, be with my family, make some tough decisions, and just do the thing that in my heart I knew was the best. And I can safely say this now. I knew there was no way I was ever leaving Tallahassee once I got here. I knew the answer was always going to be family. And that's coming from somebody who pursued radio for 20 years. Then 20 years happened, and I didn't really know the family anymore. And now that I'm back, I don't understand why. I don't understand why I didn't get it until it became an emergency. I thought I was better than that. But I got off the yellow brick road, so to speak. Chasing fortune, fame, uh, radio, entertainment, thinking it was going to lead to something bigger and better. What's bigger and better? Money? Women? Clout? Power? I didn't achieve anything that I chased. And family was still there. So what does that tell me? Tells me what's important. Anybody that says they don't have any regrets is an asshole. Don't let them fool you. Um, So getting out of being by myself and being around a back in a place of love and acceptance unconditionally was ultimately the best thing for me because I could no longer live a life that was like anybody else around me. And I didn't see anyone or have anyone in my life in St. Pete, Tampa area that was going to make the sacrifice that would need it to be made for me to comfortably being around them. Oh, we'll get to dating. Maybe not in this episode. 
but I made a couple of vows to myself. And I was just so fortunate to be able to work from home. Always will be thankful for that and the people that made sacrifices to help make that possible. So I could have a livelihood. I could have insurance and pay for my very expensive drugs that are mostly toxic, but they will save me. Well, they will save my kidney so I can stay alive, but they will ultimately kill me. (laughs) It's crazy to pay so much money for something that's keeping you alive. So it'll kill you. My kidney will outlast the rest of my body. That will be just, uh, well, I don't want to get into that. But I knew I had to make some changes. And it's kind of like you're living a life where you're playing along with everybody else. It's almost like being in a crowded room, but you feel alone. Well, I never felt alone, but I always felt alone in conversation when Anytime you engage with me in a conversation and we start talking about things, yeah, you're talking about your reality. Then I talk about my reality and then your reply will be, oh, man, I forgot this thing. I always had to take it more serious than everybody else. And I did not. I didn't expect anybody else to take it serious like me for my situation. And I knew the world was going to keep turning and I knew people were going to get tired of hearing me talk about my particular situation. Three percent. So when I had to start living like your grandma and my own grandma, that's when things took a turn. That's when I could see 10 yards down the road. Ten yards. What am I talking about? Ten yards down the road. That's nothing. Um, When I could see six months, a year from now. What I was going to have to do to try to not be such a damn weirdo and be a recluse to the point where I'm afraid to have any type of human interaction. I might be too far gone now to have a normal relationship. I don't know, but I feel it. I feel. It's almost like the dark side, like I feel it taking over. I felt like I was getting to a spot where I was going to lose my nerve to live a normal life or to even try to live a normal life. And I was starting to feel upset, bitter and mad at seeing people live a normal life. And then when it came back to me, it was like, yeah, but I I forgot. I forgot, man. I wanted to be in a situation where I didn't have to remind people. I wanted to be in a position where somebody gave a damn enough to remember or tried to maybe carve out a way for me to be with everybody else and be normal. But it's far from normal. It's just what it is. But you know what I get a lot of? Well, at least you're still alive. Hey, man, we're alive, but we ain't living. I'm giving it up till it's gone, but I don't want to be alone. Loner, but I hate to be lonely. Let's get back to this. I'd like to know, are there any irregularities in receiving a third shot, whether it be the Johnson and Johnson, which was only one, or the other two, which were two apiece, and the third is actually added. Thank you very much. I'd like to know what information do you think I could give you that's better than you doing the knowledge? Do your Googles, call your doctor, figure it out. I've never advocated for anyone to get a first, second or third shot of anything. And I'm not about to start doing it. I tell you what I will tell you to do. I'll repeat what I just said. Do your own information. Do your own due diligence. I bet the last time you bought a TV, you researched the hell out of the Magnavoxes. My suggestion to you is pick a source that you trust. CDC. FDA. Um, Dr. Fauci, anybody else who has the names doctor in front of their name, including your own primary care doctor and figure out what's the best decision you need to make for yourself and the people around you. If you care about people around you or if you don't care about people around you, yeah, you might want to go a different route. However, sir, I know you like to fight a lot. I don't want you trying to fight me. So um, don't fight this information I'm giving you. Do your research and do what you have to do. I can't control 
what I want people to do or what I think is smart for people, nor am I in any kind of position to give people any sort of medical advice. I can try to point you in the right direction. I might be even wrong at pointing, but I will say this. Stay the hell away from me. Can you do that? And then it doesn't really matter what choices you make that I don't agree with. I don't have to argue with you. I will argue with you six feet away. Stay the hell away from me. Sir, there's a reason why I'm backing away from you. Can you please respect the lines on the floor here to six feet? Why are you coming up on me? I'm moving because you keep moving towards me and I'm trying to keep my safe distance away from you because I can't see the droplets that you're expelling from your big mouth. I wasn't talking about you, um, sir. I was just talking in general situation I run into in various CVSs and Walgreens and Walmarts and all of the marts and all of the places. So let me do this at this time. I'm just going to start playing all of these uh, voice messages. Some of them might be kind of redundant in the sense of, you know, a lot of rah, rah, rah. But I ask people to call. I want to play all of their calls because I just I don't want to be rude. I'll probably get ruder as the show goes on because, well, <laughs> you know me. SBK, what's happening, man? This is Nate Williams from Dick on the Beach. Uh, one of the, uh. Damn, Nate. You almost had it. Look, get it together and get back to me. Moving on. SBK, just wanted to call and give you all my support from Tampa, Florida. We miss you, man. You know, it's not the same. Nighttime radio is not the same without your voice, man. Big ups. One love from your homie over here in Tampa, JJ. I tell you what ain't the same. My income. And next time you call with all your support, maybe call with just some of your monies. Uh, Tampa radio is going to be all right. It was there before I got there. It was there while I was there. And, yo, it's going to be there long after I'm gone. But I'm gone. Bring it back. Let me tell this one more time. What's up, SBK? This is Nate Williams. Um, can I say, man, I'm so happy for your podcast coming up, bro. Um, can't wait to hear it. Can't wait. Cannot wait for what's in store. You know, I'm rooting for you, man. And I cannot wait to for you to rock it out, brother. So, SBK, boom, bye, yay, and fingers. In you, Nate. Appreciate it, man. Nate's been one of them day one dudes that's always supported me from the beginning. SB. Okay, yo, hell yeah. So happy to see you got the podcast. Bro, my heart's been broken ever since the left row radio. I'm so happy for you in Tampa. Oh, love you. So happy to see you back, bro. Keep it going. Love you. Take care, man. Thank you. That was kind of awkward, but, you know, there you go. Yeah, man, the real radio days. Those were some good days. I... I miss certain things about it, but there's just certain parts I don't miss at all. Um, oh Man, there's such a gap for some of us between what you hear on the air and what you actually think we're experiencing and payday and what we're actually experiencing. And, you know, just kind of everybody got a mic. That's about it. You have a mic. You can control what you say, but doesn't matter about your talent <laughs> uh talent is to me oh you're so talented that's a that's a stiff arm man that's like a it's an ego stroke man you don't after like 20 years of doing this you don't want that ego stroke no more you want how you talented and unemployed i ain't figured that out yet hey kevin what's going on how you doing this is ray Mello. Calling from Abu Dhabi, I want to say congratulations on your brand new podcast show and lots of luck and success with it. Um, and uh, I'm going to be tuning in from here. Uh, so take care. One love. Peace. Appreciate it, Ray. I'm going to have to get with my man, Ray Mello. He over there in Abu Dhabi. Man, I wonder if they got, y'all got the virus over there? What what it look like? Man, look, you my point, man. I'm going to get this podcast money cracking and I'm going to go over there. And I want to do the Abu Dhabi stuff just like these women on Instagram. But I don't want to like, um, 
Not, you know, now I don't want to do what they do to get the trip. I pay for my own trip because I'm not going to be beholden to one of these guys. You know, you know what they say, what the girls do over there. I just want to, like, take the same pictures they take and have some food and, and have a good time. And I know you're a good dude. You could probably show me how to get down in Abu Dhabi. Not sure what I'm going to do when I get there other than just kind of act like one of these Instagram women. And if you notice... They all take the same pictures. They're all doing the same thing. Like, how you like 22, 23? All the pictures you're taking, you never have anybody in the picture with you. You're out there in the desert riding dune buggies. You're eating these fancy foods. You're wearing these fancy clothes. How you afford that ticket? And who you go over there to see? Who brought you over there? Man, that's another one of those internet things. All the women say they want to go to Abu Dhabi and they don't even know what they're doing. They don't even know where it is. They don't know what it's about. But I've heard stories. It's the soul brother Kevin. SDK. What's happening? What it was, what it is, what it's going to be. It's your main man in Orlando. Orlando. <laughs> Down here in Florida, man. Yo, truly white boy, piss off. Just hiding at you, dog. Taking a shit right now, so um, yeah, you might hear the, the background, you know, a little echoey. But yeah, man, and what we do is shit on these motherfuckers, man. SBK podcast, man. They're fucking with you since way back when. They're still fucking with you now, man. Through the good, through the bad, all that good stuff, man. Man, piss off, SBK. Yes, sir. Piss off. Another day one. Yo, Pizzle, you've been having way too much fun in Orlando for way too long. Ever since I first met you, you're just having the time of your life. Now the social media came out and now I could see pictures of you getting it on with everybody who comes through Orlando, everybody in Orlando. You're having way too much fun up there. And you're talking about shitting on people. You know what that Abu Dhabi is about. Mm-hmm. They ain't over there flying Falcons, bruh. But no, I appreciate you. And uh, one of the few, one of the people, not few, but one of the people that I haven't seen in quite a while that when I get back to Orlando, oh, and I will be back in Orlando. I don't know if I'll be living there. I don't know what the scene is in Orlando. Hadn't been there, bro. I haven't been anywhere, but I ain't been in Orlando two, three years. Yeah, a lot of catching up to do. Still got a lot of good friends in Orlando. And, um, man, just people who've had my back for 20 years. Yeah, about 20 years. That's crazy. Back to it. So, Lily Kevin, hey, my name's Eric, man. I've been uh, listening to you since forever, and uh, I'm so glad to hear you're doing a podcast, man. I have a question for you, and um, I'm seeing that you might be in Tampa now, so this might not apply to you, but my question to you is, is the Orlando comedy scene, and even the Tampa comedy scene, important to you? And uh, how would you handle trying to revive it? Because I see both cities' comedy scenes as, as dead and not thriving. And Austin, Texas is in the middle of going through uh, an amazing revival of that entire, I wouldn't even call it a revival, it's, it's, a, it's a revolution of, of comedy. And uh, I just don't think we have the venues, we don't have the support, we don't have the talent, and uh, other than people stopping by to the arenas, we just don't have the people coming in and doing it. So I'm curious, what do you think? Because I know comedy is important to you. How do we get uh, this industry going uh, for us here in, in Florida? Thanks, man. I'm so glad to hear you have a podcast. Yeah, you're really asking the wrong dude about comedy and a comedy scene and stand up and all of that kind of stuff. Now I did my best to try to support the comedy scene in Orlando when I was there, not saying that I was on the scene as a comedian, but I had a lot of comedian friends used to bring them through the show, had a couple of comedy showcases when I dabbled in stand up, thinking that I wanted to do it. Stand up really never spoke to me like radio did. So I never really leaned into it. I didn't really do it long enough to, I would never call myself a stand-up comedian. I respected the hustle and a lot of the funny guys that were in Orlando, uh, Pedro Lima, Ken Miller, 
all kind of people. I don't want to just get started naming people and stuff, but just all kind of funny people that I was around, that I knew, that I had access to. And, hey, I used my radio situation to try to put a spotlight on them when I could. It's kind of short-lived, but, hmm. How do you get the stand up thing going? You saying it's hurting in Orlando and Tampa? I couldn't even tell you about Tampa comedy. Um, what I would say is that, man, everybody's kind of out for self now. Sometimes you have some movements in some places. Sometimes you don't. I thought the comedy scene in Orlando was really good when I was there. But, man, I was there like six, seven years ago. I have no idea what has happened since then. I don't know if these brass still funny and I don't I I just I'm not outside. I just would not be someone that knows I'm not even plugged into the people that's even trying. Bruh, I just don't know. This be What's up? It's Dan from Tom and Dan. And as I sit here and listen to my daughter do her math homework, she's six. Question for you. I'm not good at math. But I want to think that I'm good at math. What's something that you're not good at, but you really want to be good at it? Thank you, Daniel. Shout out Tom and Dan. Always have supported me. Man, this is going to sound cheesy, but I'm just talking to you like I talk to you. I really would have thought that I would have been better at being in relationships with women's and I mean I at this point thought I would be married with at least two kids family man full on and that comes from just seeing my parents being together for 53 years just how I knew how to relate to a woman was how I saw my father treat my mother and the Two things with that. Uh, the, the older I get and so much time has gone by and a bulk of my really good adult years were in a relationship that ended. Never saw myself being single. More about that single stuff on other episodes. But I really thought that I would be better at being in a relationship. And now I have a better gauge of what it is that I needed to bring to the table, what I needed to do to better myself, what I needed to do to be more appealing and the give and take. Anyway, man, look, so I would say that relationships and more importantly, like some of the finer points like communication for a guy that communicates for a living. I would think that I would have an easier time communicating with um, a partner. And like intimacy, um, you know, not like sex, but like, you know, those kind of things like I just maybe I just wasn't in tune to it like I should have been. And I see it in other people and I go, yeah, that's it. I know it when I see it, but I don't know if I'm in it. Go on. And as far as a personal question goes for the starting of the new podcast and everything, here's my question there. You've worked in a lot of markets. Which of the markets you've worked in and succeeded, would you say, is the most challenging? Because you've had success in many. Love you, buddy. Glad to hear you again. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, man, say bye. 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 Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, I can only imagine what you get from being a father. I, I, I know it's rewarding, but... For, unfortunately, I don't think that I will ever experience that. Not trying to bring you down, but just trying to salute you. Here's the thing with the different markets. I thought Orlando was tougher because that's where I came up and I had to follow some big shoes. There's some big shoes to fill. When I uh, joined the Monsters, following you, Daniel, you, <laughs> you left right before <laughs> before I came there. And then you're working with uh, uh, Tom every day and you in a room, you know, dudes in there funny as hell. Some killers on the mic and you got to get in there and come behind after you. Had look, man, I felt like 
everything that I was assigned while I was at Real Radio, every position, every show I was on, whatever I did, I always felt like I brought something to the table. But I felt like I wasn't looked at like I was good. I was looked at like I just kept surprising people. And I'm like, well, at what point are you good? At what point are they not going to be shocked that you're successful again when you've been successful? I, I found it was like you. It's kind of like you just had I had to keep proving myself. I had to keep proving myself. And I thought I was bringing as much to the table as anybody else, um, you know, respectively. In Tampa, I felt like I was an outsider trying to force my way into kind of like into a situation where people were like you start from zero with the people and you already have an expectation of what you can do and you're coming from a situation where you felt like you had to prove yourself all the time and you feel like well i kind of have proved myself but now you have to reset and prove yourself again i didn't feel like i got the love in tampa that i got in orlando but got a kidney in tampa so that's a win also lost everything that was dear to me in Tampa, including my kidney. <laughs> like, Tampa has so many skeletons and ghosts for me. I don't really care. I had never felt comfortable in Tampa. I, I it, it symbolizes a bunch of loss for me, even though I was born and reborn there. It, it symbolized a lot of loss. SBK. Uh, so I got a question for you, man. This is dirt. So now you're not at radio. Uh, what's the chances of going back to that stand-up comedy career, man? Once again, with the stand-up thing, you would think that that's something that's in my wheelhouse, something that I'd be interested in, something that I might be okay at. Not my passion, not my love. I'm more of a barbecue comedian. I'm funny around the grill. As soon as the food off the grill, bro, my joke's gone. Nah, that's not happening. I'd do something else crazy before i do yeah, that yeah spk i was just wondering when are you going to get your cdl license get out of here and drive a truck just wonder did you hear that dirt something i've talked about often is getting a cdl license and getting in a truck think about this i like to drive i like to be alone i like to be with my own thoughts man trucking might be the move you never know Plus, you can stay safe. You can um, not have to be around people, not have to worry about people being courteous, not have to worry about people looking past themselves to look at the greater good for anything. You can just be on the road, seeing the country. Man, truck is the backbone of this country, bro. Why wouldn't I want to do it? I'm tired of saying, bro. Moving on. SBK in the building. We've been waiting for this for a long time. Yo, you know who it is. It's your boy, the Black David Hasselhoff, a.k.a. If it's free, it's for me, a.k.a. I'm running up in your house with a blouse just to get close to your spouse. While your man in the backyard flipping the barbecue, I'm in the bedroom breaking the mattress. Duke, yo, I got a question. I want to know how you feel about cancel culture. Does cancel culture exist, or is it just a ploy by celebrities to get their fans amped up to give them more money? Because I'm seeing no cancellations, but I'm seeing bank accounts growing. You know what I'm saying? They're turning a few people talking on Twitter into something that it ain't. Yeah, a few concerts here and there might get canceled, but it's on and popping after that. Give it about, you know, what? The uh two two three weeks everybody, everything back to normal, and uh yeah that's that's all I wanted to ask you, and I'm good back to listening to this show. Your VOB, my man, the Black David Hasselhoff. I always wanted to ask him, like, why we need a black one of them? But you might have a point, man. You might have stumbled up on it. It looks like we've gone from no publicity is bad publicity to this. Uh, the evolution of that is the cancel thing where really it's just bringing more attention to the person wait until everybody cools down and then you driving the price back up. That is something I think that they kind of reverse engineer. Like somebody fell into that. The first people that were getting canceled, they got canceled for real and you ain't see them anymore. They didn't have a career. Now, you know, we as uh broke people, we, 
look at it and be like, oh, my goodness, you got canceled. But these people are already sitting on money. Like, so some of them, it's an exit ramp. So you can just go live a normal life or whatever and not be as famous, but you still got your money. <laughs> but here's the thing. I think some people found a clever way to mess up. Because some of these people aren't brilliant. Their teams around them are brilliant. And it's just, are you going to listen and follow through the plan or not? I think some people legitimately messed up, but it worked for them. And then they were able to drive the price up by getting their name out. I guarantee you, in the rap world, if you tune into that, yeah, we knew who Da Baby was. But now, Da Baby has gone from getting canceled to people knowing who he is. Then he pops back up on Kanye's album because Kanye's a risk taker and he likes to put people out there. He drops the best verse of his life on that. Now he's embraced by the best comedian of our generation, Dave Chappelle. That's crazy. That's a win. He already got the bag and he's going to keep getting the bag. But don't forget, he did shoot and kill a nigga in Walmart. That's be great. Got the bag. Uh, but I did have one question. I'm wondering what you think about all this uh, billionaire space shit. Think they're ever going to go to the moon? Billionaires going into space? The ride's only like 15 seconds. Do the math on the ride and the money. Follow the money up in the air. Where's the money now? What happened to it? And you know we ain't go to no goddamn moon. Get out of here. There's no tone. Oh, brother. Uh, when are you coming back to Orlando? You want me to just... Pop up in Orlando and just what? Just uh, hmm, tell you, hey, I'm here. What? Come, come find me. What? What? Tweet some my location. Like, what? What do you want? What do you? What are you doing? What is this? When are you gonna get a proper voicemail greeting? Instead of telling me that the subscriber is not available. Get, get some custom, bro. Big time. Thank you. Thank you. I did have to call my own number, 407-276-0619. You don't have to remember to be in the show description. Uh, That's the number you can call to leave a comment on topics. We're going to build the show by having your topics thrown my way. And uh, I do the show probably once a week. And, you know, I'm going to talk about the biggest stories. Or if there's something that I didn't bring to the table, you can call up, bring it to the table. And we're going to build the show Just like that. But I did call the number and it was like the subscriber, the Google subscriber is not available. And I was like, oh, man, I'm giving bad customer service. I could do better than that. So I changed it. So now there's a personal greeting when you call that number and the greeting is the greeting. Hello. How's it going, man? How's your health? I haven't really heard much about that lately. Can't say I've heard much from you anyway. Thanks for asking. My health is actually quite well these days. I've been exercising. I've been eating. Well, I picked up 15 pounds. I was going to say I've been eating healthy. But I have. In between eating stuff I'm not supposed to eat, I've been eating very healthy. You know what I mean? So that that makes sense to you. I've gained 15 pounds, but I'm losing 15 pounds at the same time. So it's almost a wash. Yeah, so I'd like to ask a question about... um the separation between uh, homosexual rights and how mainstream media and mainstream uh, society put homosexual rights probably before uh, you know civil rights of, of people of African American descent. Just questioning: Do you see any difference in that? Or I, I, I just want to check that out. Thank you very much. Bye. But damn, you just beeped up in here with a question, trying to start some controversy, trying to get me up out of here on my first episode. I might cancel myself, man. I'm for people. And I think all people need the same basic human rights as being human beings on this planet. And as far as the media putting the rights of gay people before the rights of black people, as you were saying, um, man, I don't think it's an either or like one person needs rights. I think everybody, like I said, deserves the same human rights. And you sound like you was black, but you didn't sound like you was gay. So obviously, I don't know what you're getting at, but here's what I'm going to tell you. How do you expect justice on land that was stolen? So, brother, Shannon Burton, 
I do. Um, kind of shocked that uh, the bone shaved you off like they did. Uh, but I think this podcast thing is uh, your calling. Uh, you're the funniest fucker. Oh, can I say that on your podcast? Funniest motherfucker I've ever worked with uh, or heard on the radio. Um, I wish you great success. And uh, I would like to, you know, maybe make myself available for a guest appearance from time to time. Uh, anyway, dude, uh, more power to you. You're the man. Keep it going. Hope you're uh, healthy. See ya. <laughs> Shannon Burke. Man, glad to see you still doing your thing out there, man. Had some real good times, man, at The Bone and at Real Radio with you. You know, a lot of people thought that we had a falling out. Well, we did, and then we kind of got back together, and then, uh, you know, things get all radio-y with the whole business side of things, and boom, there you go. But, um, nah, man, appreciate you, man, and thanks for calling. Thanks for checking in, and definitely we're going to have to connect and collab on some stuff. Like, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, have you on as a guest. We can chop it up. See what kind of, I'm about to check your show out, see what kind of shit you've been talking lately. Yeah, I would really want to know what you think about that Capitol riot. Was it a riot? Or was it more like a typical White House visit? You tell me. I was looking for you in the video. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yo, Kev, it's JP. Where can I get this podcast, man? Get back to me. I need some SBK. Bye. There's no more room for a person like me in the modern radio space. I had my run. I had a good run. And for the last two weeks, because I have so many like real life things going, I know you saying, well, your job is real life, too. Yeah, you <laughs> you need Well, I need the benefits more so than I needed the money. But felt like a big weight was lifted off of my chest in between Tampa, in between Tampa and Tallahassee, living in two worlds, trying to, what, what do they say? You can't serve two gods. You're going to hate one and love the other. Balancing where does my radio career go if I can't be outside, if I can't be a Tampa radio personality in Tampa, how much life does that have? Um, but then there's some other stats that looked pretty good in my favor on that side of it so who knows what happens i it's neither here nor there what it is is the fact is you have to figure out what's important to you and you have to figure out how you want to live your life this short existence that we have this small small amount of time that we're here on this rock and um I've had 20 years of radio. Truth is, if it all ended for me two weeks ago, it's yet to be seen if it has ended for me. I seriously don't, I don't see myself getting back in a terrestrial radio situation unless it's something that I can't even contemplate right now, even as I talk to you. Like, oh man, I'm knocking stuff down. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that would look like. I don't know. Where that would be, I don't see my situation being accommodated, something that I won't compromise on. I have to stay healthy. I have to stay safe. And if I have to build something from the ground up, you see, 20 years of radio went bye bye. You can't pass that on to your kids. You can't pass that on to anybody. However, you can carve out your own niche and not be beholden to anyone, but only yourself. I'm the only person that has to look myself in the mirror. I'm the only person that have to make the ends meet. I'm the only person that's responsible for me, my peace, my sanity, because I guess all of that's kind of the same, my health. And man, I felt like there's a weight lifted off of me. So. I'm interested to see what direction this podcast is going to take. I'm going to start doing some lives on YouTube. I'm just going to fire it up. All my social media links are in the show descriptions, and you'll see how to contact me. I will be out there, even though I'm not outside. 
I got all kind of stuff coming and I can't really talk about, but I'm excited in the directions that things are going to take. And I don't know what this podcast is going to be. I'm just going to build it. May not be a lot of guests, but it'll be a lot of info, a lot of ideas, and I'll be giving it the only way I know how to give it. I don't know how to make up anything new. Being me is hard enough. I don't know how to be anybody else. I have an etiquette question uh, referring back to a previous episode where, according to Kevin, going blackface on Halloween is not acceptable and does deserve an egging, except if you were Jimi Hendrix, I believe. Now, my question is, what is the etiquette for going as NWA as a white guy this year? Am I allowed to wear a jerry curl? Am I allowed to tint one gentleman's face yellow? Please discuss. Please discuss. How are you referencing something on a previous episode if this is the first show? Huh? Well, okay, I play along. Look, if you have the right, your body, your choice, buddy, it works on so many levels. If you have the right to not do, if you have a right to govern your body, then you have a right to govern your face. Even if it's a white face and you want to make it a black face, even if you want to be N.W.A. with a jerry curl, make sure it's juicy. Make sure it's moist. Make sure it's dripping on the back of that Raider jacket. Look, if you want to do that, you can do it. If you want to do black face, brother, more power to you. May the Lord be with you and may the devil be behind you. And if you want to smear some dude yellow, good luck with him, too. Because I believe that you are going to get what you are free to get in this country. And that is a reaction. You have the right to do what you want and put it out there. But you don't have the right to expect a certain outcome. I would expect your outcome to be to be set upon and to be beaten about the face, the neck and stomped in the groin, the stomach area and maybe the buttocks. But that's just me. We'll end with this. Kevin. WTF. No, they didn't. So, what the hell happened? Wait for you to let us know what's going on because I miss you. And I have just stopped listening on my drive home. So, please... Let us know what's going on. Dude, I miss you. Let me tell you what happened. Life. It was just uh, another Thursday where, like millions of other Americans, have um, been let go and separated from a job that they love. The radio was more than a job for me, it was a passion. It was a way for me to express myself it was a way for me to connect with people on a mass communication level that you just rarely get uh, the privilege of doing it was indeed a privilege and an honor to be on the airwaves but as I embark on a new journey to build something that's unique that's me that's uh, unapologetic and I have to carve that out and figure out what that means but I'm not special it was just a Thursday <laughs> Like I said, it was a regular day And you know how this thing works Children grow, women produce And some gonna rob and some gonna steal Everybody's gotta make a living The website is SoberTheKevin.com Where you can find anything involving SBK I am the front man Thank you for listening Fangas.